Every day, about 23,000 people start learning Blender for the first time. But a year later, most of those people will have given up because Blender is hard and it's very easy to get overwhelmed. I've been using Blender for 22 years, so here are my five pieces of advice for beginners. Starting with number one, don't learn geometry nodes. When you're new to something, it's very easy to get misled. And right now, I think lots of beginners are being misled into thinking they need to learn geometry nodes because on social media right now, that's all you ever see from the community. One beginner told me in an interview that it just seems like geometry nodes is the way that you create things now, but that's not true. The reason you see geometry nodes everywhere is because it is new and it is novel. So people will always click on it, but it's really only used when you need either thousands of variants, very specific animation needs, or you have lots of elements that need to interact with each other. And it's such a specialized skill that most studios have just one technical artist that knows it and nobody else on the team touches it. So if you are a beginner, you don't need to learn geometry nodes besides how to scatter something, that's about it. What you should be learning instead is modeling and texturing, that's it. These two skill sets are not new or sexy, so nobody will ever get internet points for recommending it, but it is the skills with the highest payoff because you use it all the time. It is the foundation that everything else sits on top of. Good lighting, good composition, all of that is meaningless if you don't have a good model or good textures. So once you finish the donut, filter for tutorials on modeling, like hard surface, bevels, sub D, booleans, curves, as well as texturing like shader nodes, PBR textures, procedural textures, and UV unwrapping. You probably wanna know what some tutorials I would recommend, but honestly, I haven't found a curriculum that teaches both of these topics in a cohesive way. So I'm actually making one. It is a paid course that will be released at the end of the year, aimed at teaching beginners how to learn Blender. It's called the Blender Guru Academy. And if you'd like to be notified when it is released, you can join the waitlist by clicking the link in the description. Number two, more tutorials. I get a lot of emails from beginners like this that are stuck. And a common reason they're stuck is that they're trying to do something that is way too ambitious before they have watched enough tutorials. And look, I get it. Tutorials are often boring and it can feel like a detour because you really wanna do this one thing, but then you have to do this boring other thing that feels completely unrelated. But unless you've built up those skill sets, you will waste more hours creating it the wrong way. So I recommend the cadence of following one tutorial followed by one related solo project. So for example, after following the donut, you could close YouTube and try to make something yourself that uses the same skills. For example, a plate of cookies or a gingerbread man. It doesn't have to be pastry or bake related, but something that uses those skills. A solo project should be just challenging enough that it is interesting, but not so foreign that it involves skills that you haven't learned yet. For reference, I started learning Blender back in 2004 because I wanted to make a car but it took me four years of following unrelated tutorials, doing a bunch of these side quests before I actually had the skills to accomplish that goal. Number three, losing motivation. Your chances of quitting a new skill are highest about a month after you start learning something because once the excitement has worn off, the hard work begins. And then you begin to forget why you're torturing yourself and the internet of distractions looks mighty interesting. So your number one priority at the start of learning any new skill should be to maintain your motivation. That is it, just stay motivated. And there's many ways that you can do this, but an effective method that I used when I did my six month drawing challenge was to create a wallpaper cycle. Now this will sound stupidly simple, but I promise you it works. What you do is you go to ArtStation or Pinterest or wherever you get your inspiration from, and then you save 10 to 20 images of artworks into a folder called Inspiration. Now importantly, it should only be images that hit that specific part of your brain where if you saw it at your lowest point, it would fire you up. So don't worry if it's not popular, it's not something that would get you employed. Don't worry if it's a theme that your family would not approve of. If you really like Jurassic insects and the thought of modeling prehistoric bugs fires you up, then that should be in your folder. Now, once you've got these 10 to 20 images into your folder on your computer, you go to your system settings and then you use that folder as a wallpaper that cycles every hour. I put some links below so you can see how to do this for Mac and Windows, as well as how to do it for Android and iPhones. Now, the reason that this technique works so well is that it is called a push 
motivation rather than a pull, meaning this doesn't require any effort to be inspired. On average, most people look at their phone about 150 to 200 times a day. So that could be 150 reminders of why you are learning Blender. Trust me, it works. Number four, use AI. Two years ago, if you needed to randomly rotate multiple objects and you didn't know how, you'd have to wade through page after page of forum chit chat, praying that you'd stumble on somebody asking the exact same question. But today you can ask ChatGPT and get the exact answer you need in seconds. And it is incredible. It's like having a mentor right next to you that you can ask unlimited questions to. But not only is it not expensive, it's basically free. What's more, if you access Gemini by going to aistudio.google.com, you can stream what's on your monitor to Gemini while you're working. Then you just talk into your microphone and ask it questions like you've got a mentor sitting next to you. Now, AI has a bad name in art circles because there's a big fear of mass job loss. But as an educator that is theoretically at risk of losing my job to AI, here's why I think that is wrong. My job is to help you learn Blender, right? And previously that might have been what to click on in what sequence. But now that's at least partly solved. So I and all the teachers of the world should move on to the next thing that students need help with, which is problem solving. So I could focus on tutorials like how I made this type videos or deep dive into new features that haven't been explored yet. There is so much more to teach. So please make use of AI because you will learn Blender so much faster if you do. Number five, stick to reference. One of the biggest wastes of your time is gonna be repeating mistakes. And a very common way that people end up repeating mistakes is always creating things from their imagination. And the reason that happens is when you finish, you have no way of knowing how far off the mark you are because there's no ground truth. So the solution is to copy a single reference image, not a group of reference images that's on like a separate monitor, like a vision board. Copy one single reference image one-to-one. -one. And then when you render, you go to your compositor, load that in, and then you use the split node or the opacity, whatever, slide it back and forth, and you will see the differences night and day. And when you do this, it just becomes clear what would otherwise take months, potentially years to understand, like how important focal length is, light direction, exposure, materials, lighting, all those little details that you would miss because you're not seeing them that close together. So again, I'd say reference matching is the closest thing to having a free mentor next to you, which is gonna reveal exactly what you need to learn next. For more tips like this, click subscribe and to be notified when my paid course for beginners is released, you can join the waitlist by clicking the link in the description.